Hello everyone, how are you doing today? <clears throat> I'm here with a different video and today's video we have an old HP laptop. These are really good laptop back in its time. These ones are modeled the HP Pavilion DV6000. So if your laptop is not, if you have the same laptop and it's, you, when you turn it on, all the lights go on, but there's no black screen you get and the screen doesn't turn on. And we're gonna test it to verify that. So we're gonna put the charger and we do get the blue light on the charger in here. The light is on and we're gonna turn it on and we see all the lights turning on and the fan spins. Even the DVD-ROM drive, it's working. I guess it's kind of stuck, but I don't know why it's not popping out. But it does actually, I guess this one has a bad DVD-ROM drive, but there's nothing on the screen, all right? So we're gonna open it up and we're gonna repair this. So first thing first, power it off, flip it upside down, and you're gonna need one tool few tools actually. You need an opening tool and this screwdriver set. This is iFixit tool set. I really recommend this one. It has all the bits that you need. You want to be using Phillips number one or Phillips number zero in this case. And we also be gonna needing an opening tool. I use the guitar pick, a metallic one and a pair of tweezers. All right, and let's get into it. First thing first, you want to uh, slide this slider right to the right and the battery will come up. So remove the battery. Second step, remove the service covers, covers at the bottom. The screws have a lock on them so it will not come out. So you have to actually loose them up only. And uh, remove the other one. Okay, here we have the hard drive and the Wi-Fi. Here we have, I mean, the RAM and the Wi-Fi here, the hard drive. Grab this plastic right here and pull it upwards. Remove the hard drive. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to remove the RAMs by pulling these two triggers apart. One, and remove it in 45 degree angle. Second RAM, remove it. Unhook the Wi-Fi cables, so pull them up. Remove the Wi-Fi board. All right, next, we have to remove these two kind of uh, risers right beside the Wi-Fi boards. We have to remove these two. You can do it with a, you can do it manually. Just go ahead and loose them up and move it around slowly until it just comes up. Or you can uh, get this, Kind of adapter is for this one for the riser so you put it on top and then you can just unscrew it so if you don't have the adapter you can do it uh, using the any other tool that you you would like all right once we remove that one over there now we're gonna start removing all the screws on the top cover so starting from this corner, the screws, uh, try to do a schematic on a paper so you know which screw goes where. For example, these two corner screws are a little bit longer than the these, these two right here. So Watch the video slowly and if you have a problem, just go over and you'll see it. So these four are the same. This one is the same, same. So pretty much mostly all the around the screws, even the mid ones here, the one right here, the one by the DVD-ROM, two on the corners, 
every corner at the back, they're all the same size, except the two back ones, these are the shorter ones. Even the two screws right inside the battery, right here by the battery connector and the one in the corner, these are the same size as the other ones. And we're gonna remove the three screws, the chrome screws right under the battery. These are shorter ones, so I guess. Right. Those are the shorter ones. We're gonna remove the screw right here, the one under the hard drive. That's the long one too. Remove the keyboard the screw right here. Again, that's the same one. Pull out the DVD ROM drive. And uh, right under the DVD ROM drive, there are super flat screws right here. Remove those. Those are really super flat small ones, so you can miss them. you cannot forget where they go. They are pretty much hard to forget. So remove three screws right there. And pretty much double check, make sure you haven't forgot any screws. And next, what you want to do, you want to grab a flathead screwdriver. And let me see if I have one here. And we're going to remove these risers right on every corner of this clip right here. So go ahead and so remove these two screws right there. All right, pretty much we are done down here. We're not going to do anything else. You're going to open it up and put it in a normal position. We're going to remove this top panel a little bit, just a bit. So what you want to do, you want to grab the opening tool and you want to stick it between the top and the bottom cover. And you just want to lift it up. Same thing on this side. There. Once it's loosened up, just lift up a little bit and pull it backward a tiny bit because there's a two flex cable that we don't want to damage that. And just pull up the cable, keyboard. Untangle it, just pull it out a little bit, flip it over. Now, we see these two, there's a ribbon cable right here, we need to disconnect that one. To remove this cable right here, you have to pull these triggers upward towards the screen. A little bit, about two millimeters or one maybe. And then the flex cable will slide out pretty easy. All right, next, what you need to do, remove this two flex cable right here just by pulling this one up there's no lock on this one just pull it backward same here pull it backward now we're going to untangle it and once once you untangle this one you can just rotate and disconnect this switch right here just pull this jack backward now that's your on off switch and the volume rocker and top panel. Next you want to pull this handle upward. This is the screen LCD cable. So pull it up and the connector will come out. Next you're going to rip this capped on tape. Pull it to one side. Pull the cables for the Wi-Fi cables. Just pull them out. Uh, untangle it, rip this up, untangle from here, untangle it, untangle it, make sure it untangles it all the way there. Untangle the other cable, this is the webcam. And now we're going to disconnect it from the board, pulling this jack backward. All right, now once we got those two, we are going to go ahead and unscrew the black screw right here. That's the same size screw as the bottom case. The black screw on the other side. And the screen will come out just like that. We can put this to one side. Now we're going to remove the black screw right there and the one over here on each corner. Look, now we're going to remove the chrome screws right on the shield. All right, two of them. Next, we need to disconnect the cable for the touchpad, which is here. 
So the same way that you remove the keyboard is this one over here. You have to pull this two triggers toward the touchpad. A little bit, not too much. And the flex cable will slide out. Now, what you need to do, oh, we need to remove this black screw right here too. Okay, now we're gonna put your finger right here and we're gonna lift up the top cover. Actually, let's go ahead and first remove the back bezel. So lift it up and just twist it, it will come out. Now we can go ahead and lift up this part and remove the top uh, palm rest. That's what they call this. Now down here we have the motherboard. We need first to remove this uh, expansion board right here. Just first remove the tray and remove the four screw that holds it. One right there, two exposed. And the other two are inside here. They are the same size, so you can put the screws right where they have the tray, so you know where which screws goes where. And now you can just uh, remove this one just by sliding it to the side. Next, let's go ahead and remove this shielding. Okay. Next, we're going to remove the screws on the motherboard, this one over here, in this corner. And that's it pretty much. There's no more screws. Now, what do you want to do? We don't need to remove the power jack. The two screws holding the power jack board goes all the way to the motherboard. You only need to remove this screw that we removed from the motherboard. And we're going to lift up a little bit. We're going to untangle this cable, this cable right from there. So bring it over so you can have a little room to work with. Once you lift it up a little bit, you want to pull this audio jack cable backwards. So grab this jack and pull it towards the outside. There you go. Now, same thing for the power cable underneath here. So pull this jack downward so you get it disconnected. And there's another jack down here is sliding towards the battery. So just slide it out towards the battery and it's right there. The angle that I have on this one is hard to show in the camera, but it's right in the corner. There's, you cannot miss it. And then you're going to lift up the motherboard. And that's your bottom chassis. You want to leave, clean it up or leave it to one side. Now down here we have the whole motherboard. The BIOS battery right here. The heatsink, the fan and the connector for the fan. So go ahead and remove the connector for the fan. Next, we're going to remove the heatsink by removing one, two, three, four, five screws. These screws have a lock, C lock on them, so the screw will not come out. It will only get loose, so loose them up. And now you want to grab it from the middle here and pull it up. And we can see the original thermal paste that they had here. So we have to clean that. And the failure for this one that it does, is not turning on is uh, soldering balls right under the GPU because they overheat a lot. And we're going to re-solder the soldering balls. But before that, we're going to do a, uh, what's called reflow. So we're going to do a reflow on this chip. Before we can do anything, we need to remove the CPU. Well, before remove it, go ahead and clean up the thermal paste on top with an alcohol. If you see this kind of metal thing is not getting off, right there, that's not broken or anything. Just grab your uh, opening tool and just scrub it off. And now it's all cleaned. So nicely cleaned. Now we can go ahead and remove the CPU by twisting this lock right to where it stays a lock position right there just twist it 180 degrees to other side and that's it and now you can lift up the cpu we're going to remove this isolation tape right here we're going to put it back so don't trash it now what we need to do 
is to isolate the GPU. Before we do that, you want to go ahead and clean up the heat sink. So remove this tape right on top. You don't, this one you don't need it. Uh, you need to scrub the old uh, foil tape right here. So scrub this one off, make sure it's nice and clean. So go ahead and do this. All right, you can replace this thermal pad. We need to change the thermal pad on this one. All right, to clean up the heat sink nicely, you wanna remove these screws. There are three screws on here, so a tiny black one. So remove this screw right there. Remove the screw here. And the reason the GPU overheats, overheats and burns because nobody does the service, lift up this corner and there's another screw hiding right underneath. All right, then you have to rip this tape right over here. And there's one more screw on this corner, so remove this screw too. Okay, now look at all this dirt in there. And you wonder why it's not cooling down, so this is the reason. So you want to grab an old toothbrush and go ahead and clean up nicely tightly everything here and all this dust everything else has must go once you clean up this one you also want to clean up the fan with a toothbrush also if you grab it evenly right from here you can remove it so you can wash and clean this one nicely with a toothbrush with alcohol clean up this motor and once you clean it up you're going to inject a lubricant right inside the paint so we get a better rotation on the fan so and uh, now down here we're going to prepare this one for reflow to prepare this one for a reflow it's very simple you need a foil tape a thick gauge foil tape it's not too there are two of them like one of them are really skinny and this one is actually really nice and thick so you want to grab this one i'll try to find the link in the description i'll put so cut about 20 centimeters probably uh, you want to cut it about twice the length of the GPU. Just like that. Now we're going to isolate the GPU with a foil tape. I don't want to put this foil tape adhesive over the pins of the socket of the CPU. So what I do, I'll put this one over to covering the pins. And then I'm going to put the foil tape right near about 2 or 3 millimeters away from the GPU. All right, and then I'll bring it over and I'm just going to stick it right on top. If you want to disconnect the bias battery, go ahead and do it just by pull it up. The jack, just pull the jack up and the battery will get disconnected. Now once we did this side, we're going to do the other side because we don't want to heat up this jack, otherwise the plastic is going to melt down. So go ahead and isolate that one too. To isolate that one, you will put the whole tape beside it and bring it over. Make sure your fault tape doesn't get doesn't doesn't matter. You just don't want to break. It doesn't have to be too neat and tidy. As long as you cover. All you need to do is cover the, you don't want to cover every component, all you need to cover the plastic, anything that can be damaged by the heat. So cover up a little bit, if you popped any tape, it just got cracked a little bit, put an extra foil tape over that one, just like this. Okay. Now... There's no more isolation needed, but if you want to be really picky, go ahead and isolate this side too. But this plastic over here is a really hardened plastic. It's not going to get damaged by the heat, so don't worry about that one. But I just have a left full tape left over, so I've just put it there. You don't need to cover this side, but if you want to, go ahead and cover those sides too. So once you have it in this position and I, everything is isolated, what you need to do, you go to the over the heat gun station. And if you have a heat gun station, you want to set it up at 280 Celsius and you want to heat it up 
evenly over this and just move it around and heat it up for about two minutes. For two minutes, you're gonna heat it up and then after that, you let, gonna turn it off and you're gonna let it cool down in a room temperature for 10 minutes before moving or touching this one. Try not to blow air to it or try not to put air conditioning near this one. It has to cool down by in a room temperature. It's very, very important. So if you do not have a heat gun to do this process, you can grab a hair dryer and set it at max heat and you can bring it near this one about two or three centimeters over top and you wanna keep it that in that position for about five to six minutes. After that, turn it off and let it cool down in a room temperature for five to 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead, heat it up in a, my workstation and I'll be back. All right, now that we heat it up and we let it cool down at room temperature, we're gonna remove all the foil tape and it should come out pretty easy. So remove and trash all the foil tape that you had in there. And we're gonna start putting everything back together. Put the isolation tape right where we removed it. Okay, grab the heat, the CPU, put it in the right place. Uh, you see this tiny triangle right there? The triangle has to face the triangle on the board in the corner. And it's going to just fall in place. Lock it down by twisting this 180 degrees to the other side. Right there. Now what we need to do is to clean up the heating that I didn't do yet. So I'm going to clean up this quickly and I'll be back. Alright, now I clean up uh, all the dust from the heatsink. I'm going to show you a nice way to clean up your fan. So the best thing is to just hold up your towel, working towel, and just soak it in alcohol. And what you want to do, you want to stick it right between the pen in the middle and all the way inside and just want to gently rotate this one. And this is going to remove all the old oil or any dust that has been accumulated there that it slows down, it's gonna remove, and it's gonna remove all the dirt from there. I already did a pass on here, yours might be really dirty, so go ahead and clean that. Next, you wanna grab your lubricant for the motor, and you wanna inject that one or two drops nicely inside there, where the pen goes. You don't wanna overdo this one, just one or two drop, that's more than enough. You don't wanna do extra, because otherwise it's gonna be all over the place. And then you want to grab the fan and you want to put it on top and just do a few rotation with your hand the other way around and this way both ways and that's it now bring it over and put it in place and put the tiny screws that you removed that four of them one at the side and the rest goes on top or i guess this is the bottom And one was hitting right under the isolation hit tape right here. All right, now that we have it nicely and cleaned up the heat sink, we are ready to put it back together. So grab the motherboard. You don't need to put this isolation or the GPU or CPU, but if you want, you can just put it just like this. And it's just to protect the capacitors by not touching the heat sink, but it actually will never touch. So and you just put it there if you want to. Now what we need, we need to replace the thermal pad that we had. This is old thermal pad. You want to grab the new thermal pad. And you want to place it on top. You might want to cut your thermal pad in a nice, nicely way than mine. Uh, for the thermal pads, I'm using a Grizzly th uh, thermal pads. These are really nice thermal pads that they have. They're really high end. They are like this ones here. It's a Thermal Grizzly. And I'll leave the link in the description. They're really, really good. 
or I cannot say how good they are. Next, you want to grab your uh, Arctic MX4 and thermal paste. You want to apply a tiny line over the CPU, just like that. Now, what you want to do here is very important. I usually, what I do, I just bend, use this screwdriver or you can use uh, whatever you want to, just bend the legs a little bit backwards so you get a little more tension towards the CPU. Not too much, just a little bit because we need the force to push towards the CPU. That's gonna help to transfer the heat much better. Okay, even with the, this one over here, you wanna rotate upward a little bit, and that's it. Just a little bit, not too much. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring it over straight. Once we put it down, we don't wanna lift it up again. Okay, make sure everything is matched. Now this is very important. You wanna start from this, I have actually one, two, three, four, but I would recommend you to start from the number two right here. Put it a little bit through and then go to number one and do halfway through, go to the number three, do a little bit and go to number four and the one by the GPU. And then now you can do a second pass and tighten up all of them. This way the thermal paste is gonna spread nicely and evenly over the die. So if you try to push this one all the way down, it's gonna push all the thermal paste to one side. So this way it's gonna sit down straight. There we go. Next, you can grab the rams, put the ram in 45 degree angle, and push it all the way in and to the motherboard. Make sure you hear those clicks. 45 degree to the motherboard, all the way to the next ram. Plug in the BIOS battery in, okay, flip it over, grab the isolation right here, put it on top, and it might not have any stickiness to it, but it's just for isolating from the top cover. Now what you want to do, you want to grab the base, the bottom cover right here, you want to clean it up if, you, if yours is dirty. Just do a little bit of cleaning. You don't need to exaggerate on this one. Okay. Now, this part is going to be a little bit tricky. Oh, I actually forgot it's really important to put the fan connected to the motherboard. Most people usually forget it, and I was about to forget it too. So make sure you put the fan connector there. Now you're gonna grab your motherboard in this position for you, like the way you put the RAM, you wanna put the IOS end down first. Make sure it goes nice and snugly there. Now you wanna grab it in 45 degree angle, you wanna connect this connector right in there. So grab the jack, slide it to the place. Okay, make sure this connector right here, it goes in. Grab the connector for the power jack. I'll try to do it in a camera, but let me see. Grab it and then push it toward there. So make sure these two are connected nicely. Now you wanna lift it up a little bit and you wanna push in down this connector for the audio board. Let me first grab it. So push this contact right in there. It's very simple, it goes in very easy. So just mount it right there. Now you wanna bring it down again, adjust to make sure this side is not in yet. So it has to go right in there. Wiggle it around a little bit, push it down and there. Make sure the Wi-Fi switch is nicely in place. Run the cable in the corner. And that's it, pretty much is nicely sitting in place. Well, this shielding is bothering me, so I'm just gonna adjust it right there. Okay. The Wi-Fi switch is in place, it's working fine. Now we're gonna grab the expansion board right here. You're gonna slide it in 
we're gonna put the four screws for this expansion board and the only screw that was on the motherboard this one right here I'm sure this one was the black screw but I'll put the white one but I don't know doesn't matter but those are the same size as the other ones so there's only two or three types of screw size so don't worry about if you use one in the other place as long as there are short screws all right once we got in this position now we're gonna grab the other top cover and we're gonna bring it over make sure everything is in place bring it over and put it on top and you want to pinch the front the top cover and the bottom cover make sure it sits nice and flush evenly nicely and pinch it all right let's put the screw right here first put the screw on this corner now grab this top cover bring it over set it in place just pinch it with the bottom cover put the black screw right in here to hold it in place so put the short screw there all right now uh, put the white screw right here actually this one was from here so this one the black screw goes in the corner here the white one the short one goes here the black screw goes actually i have three of them yeah so put the black screw in the corner there now once we have it in this position we're gonna go ahead first connect the cable for the touchpad just slide it down underneath in between the white and the brown and then push the lock towards the jack and that's it now we're gonna grab the screen if i know where i left it right here we're gonna bring the screen over and we're gonna set it in place okay we're gonna put the screws for the hinges okay and grab the connector for the cable flex cable align it on top and just push it down make sure you hit the click run the cable for the webcam and the wi-fi cables has to go underneath all these connectors right there you just have somehow manager to put it underneath it's not too hard it's like playing tetris okay first put the wi-fi cables in you can lift up these things a little bit okay wi-fi cable goes here and then on top of that one it comes the webcam cable okay and bring it all the way here and then connect the jack leave it right there now you wanna pass through the wi-fi cables right from where you removed it bring it over tape it down if the tape is not as sticky you can use a, another masking tape and then grab the cables and then push it down to the hole and you should be able to grab it on the other side with your hand just pull it make sure the cables are not on the way on this screw hole it's very important otherwise you're going to damage the cables now next is the connector this one over here first you need to connect this cable at the back so grab this one somehow try to hold it in this position and then push it inside the jack there put it in this position run the cable under these clips so lift up the clip a little bit 
one this one's underneath it's not unnecessary but if you want to you can go but they always manage to get out somehow so it's not a must but it'll be a nice thing all right and this one too try to be gentle with this flex cable now you want to grab a tweezer and you want to grab this one evenly nicely and tightly push it toward the jack it must go halfway through all the way in same thing with this one grab it push it toward the jack make sure evenly goes halfway through and then leave it there now you want to put it in this position a little bit grab the keyboard put the keyboard in this position make sure the space bar is down grab the flex cable underneath the keyboard you guys can see if the if your lock is still open as mine is if it's not if it's in this position make sure the locks are open you have to be able to see hold it from both sides it has to be open like this and then you want to grab the cable evenly slide it on top of the lock and then make sure it goes all the way in and it has to be evenly pushed in once it's evenly pushed in all the way that it can you feel like it goes all the way in is in now you want to lock it down by pulling these two triggers back okay now the cable is not going to come out you want to grab it and you want to connect these hinges here you want these things flaps has to go under the palm rest so put this one underneath first slide it down in the corner next and lift this one up so it can fall down underneath push the corners and push the middle a little bit make sure it's nice sitting down flash put the back end of these hinges down first and then bring it over and then push down in the middle with two fingers just run it across push down on the back end make sure you hit those clicks now we are done up here now we can close it down flip it over and we can plug in everything in but before we do that we can actually do a run a test to make sure everything is powering up we don't need to put a wi-fi board or anything like that so what we're gonna do we're gonna grab the power cable and we are gonna connect it i have light and we're gonna turn it on and see if i get this, anything on the screen so wait about five seconds because we disconnected the BIOS. So what we want to do, we want to remove the RAMs because once we remove the BIOS, the RAMs maybe are not detected. So leave it with one DIM only and then we can add the other one. So I'm going to leave one DIM inside. I'm going to power it on. And there we go. We have the HP logo in there. This laptop, the dimming on these ones are really horrible so let me see if i can get f10 to the setup f10 i don't know if you guys can see the setup right there it is manageable to read so in my angle i can see it nicely so yeah now we can turn it off once you power it down disconnect it and grab the other ram again put it in place all the way in and plug it in power it on just give it about five seconds and there we go it got detected so don't get and uh, don't be paranoid don't be like it's not working just be patient first put when you remove the ram and you put it back together it takes some time so it should get going now we're gonna power it off all right i don't know what happened i was just recording and i just crashed so once what you want to do you want to flip it down and you want to plug in the wi-fi board just slide it down put the two connectors for the jack and the two screws for the wi-fi board and the screws that we removed beside the wi-fi board you want to put it back down with a tool or you can do it manually all right and the next thing will be to grab the flathead screws for under the dvd rom and hopefully it doesn't crash this time so yeah and put the three screws right underneath and grab the dvd rom and just slide it down make sure it goes all the way in and grab the two short screws and these two short screws goes at the back of the 
laptop in the mid back and the chrome screws goes right underneath the battery the three of them okay and then rest it goes all over the place doesn't matter wherever you see a screw hole just put the rest so the one inside the battery there's a two more for the keyboard and it's starting from the corner and go ahead and do it all of them even including the one on the hard drive all right now that we put all the screws there we need to put the last two screws on the side by the connector boards right the expansion board i have no idea whatever you want to call this connector right on the side i never got to use this one so put the two screws right beside it that one uh, this is not really important to put it in but it is important to remove it to be able to remove the motherboard so yeah once we have all those in and the last thing will be to grab the hard drive put the hard drive this side down first and push it down and grab the cover for the hard drive plug it in push it down grab the other one make sure this hinge side goes down underneath first and then bring it over and put the last four screws right on the covers and i hope this video helped you guys out and if it did click that thumbs up button i really appreciate it and if you have any questions or requests you know where to leave and again if you guys subscribe it really helps and motivates me to make more videos for you guys thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys in my next video